In this video, what we're going to look at is how to create um, a button that has a, a state change. So what that means is that the button would um, change if you've pressed on it. So at the minute, if we look at this um, module, we've got four buttons that don't do anything and they've got no text in it. So what we'll do first of all, we'll put some text in here just to test it and we will then see if we can get to change the actual text and uh, we could do it where we change the actual whole button or we just change the text in it. It's probably easier just to change the text. So first of all if we go down here and just put some text in this button, uh, button A that we have here just as a tester so we'll just put text and we'll just put some text in there then a comma, so we'll say test. Okay, so if I run this, hopefully that will say test in that button. Now later on we'll want to change that. So what, what, what we're going to have is uh, when you press the button, this will turn white. Okay. Now what we have to do to do create that will be um, an extra. Uh, a we'll create a function. It's called so. We define a function by doing the DEF just like we did for define for defining the graphics here, and we'll say button pressed. Okay. Now this is going to be a function because what we're going to do is we're going to put um, what what it is that the person's typed in here. Right. So we could use letters or numbers. So what we're going to do is that when we've got button A, when somebody presses button A. We want to pass a bit of information from here to this button pressed. So that what we'll do, we've got four buttons, so we'll just do one, two, three, four. Okay. So in here we could call this answer ANS or something like that to completely like that with the answer. And we'll put a comment for this and checks um, which button has been pressed and changes the color of the text. So that's what this is going to do. Okay, so what we will do, we'll say, well, if answer is equal to one, that means button A has been pressed, we'll want to change button A. So we'll do that by saying if answer is equal to, and equal is two equal signs, right? So it's different from where you see things like this because this is a defining, we're saying win, win is like a sort of variable or identifier for uh, the TK function which creates a window. Or if you see an example of a variable here, FG color is a string which holds the hexadecimal color code. Here we're actually saying if something is equal to it, if answer is equal to one. Right, so if the answer is yes, that the, uh, the answer is equal to one, we're going to change button A. So button A, it's important that we get the name of it. Here we have it, it's called BTNA, dead easy. And BTNA, you can see that we've got um, nothing defining at, at the minute. So we haven't got, say, any foreground text in it, but you did notice it came up black whenever we ran it before. So what we want to do is essentially just change that so that it comes up white maybe instead. So btna dot config and simple as fg is equal to and then whatever in quotes. So we want to put hash symbol and the color code for uh, white is this one, so it's six Fs, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that's it. So we're, what we'll do, we we'll want to just test this one. Now, the chances are we're going to come up with a problem because we've got button A inside of this procedure. So think of it like this procedure is like a closed box, right? so if you think of it like that, which means that all of these things are local. You call it local to this. So that means you can only use them with inside GUI. So this button A is definitely inside 
my graphical user interface procedure. So the problem with that is that we would need to make it a global, right? So if we make it a global, then that means it could be accessed outside of this procedure. So that's what we will uh, do. Now we can just start defining globals up at the top here. So we'll just type global, and the first one we'll do will just be BTM A, okay? But before I do that, let's just see the problem of what happens. Right? So we're going to um, put that in there, like this, and we need to now run button pressed. Now this also has another problem, because what we want to do is pass the number 1 into answer. So this is like an identifier or a variable, and we're, you know, so we're holding, we want to hold the number one, two, three, or four in here. Now the problem lies in the fact that our button here, what we need to do is put a comma on button A. So this is on the bit, this first bit, not dot place, and we say command. And when we do command, we can run other procedures or functions. So you can imagine we can do button pressed. And that will work, right? But let's look at the problem. So if we do that and we run it and you press this, okay, so we're getting a problem here. Um, it's run, when I press the button, it is running button pressed, but button pressed requires uh, one, it says one positional argument, which is the answer. Okay, so the answer should be one in this case because I pressed the first button. So you imagine this button one, two, three, four. Okay, now the reason it's not working because we're not passing any information. Now, how do we pass information? Well, this button pressed, you would put open and close brackets, and then you just put the number one in it. But this is not going to work because now we're putting too much for this command for that to work like that. So this becomes a bit of problematic, but there is a workaround. So if I run the module, and you'll see what happens now. Um, right, so straight away, even before I've gotten anywhere, it's saying button A is not defined, button A.config, it's in button press. So it's actually trying, it looks like it's trying to run. It's Here it's in command here, button press one. It does. It's, it just basically doesn't like it. So. What we need to do is change this up a little bit. So to do that, we can use this function called lambda. And the function essentially lets us pass several things. So here we've got this number one, and we can use this as well. Right? So this is a nice little easy workaround. So lambda is the function, and you do two dots. I can't, the colon, and then this is what we want in the past, the, this bit of information. So now we've got that, that will run this, uh, this function when we press it. So when I load the program, obviously nothing's coming up, so everything's good at the moment. But when I press test, we get the next error message that's coming up here. So the error message is the, the message that I was talking about before. It was saying, look, name error. Within, within this button pressed, the button A doesn't exist. Essentially, it says button A is not defined. That's because button A is a local variable here, and it's not accessible outside of GUI. So the fix for that would be that we just type global, and then just put button A. So we run this again. We've restarted it and press it, and there you go. It's turned white this time, and I've got no errors when I've restarted the program. So that this is the previous error, of course, and this is no errors at all. So it's turned white, but of course it stays like that, white like that. Okay, so we'll want to change this to not do that necessarily. Okay, so that's button A. Now you can imagine, of course, we want to do this with all our buttons. So BTN B, BTN C, BTN D. Right? So we're going to be able to use all of these as uh, globals. They're all going to be global variables now, and they can then be used here. So what we'll want to do is then um, pass that information 
and change this bit to one, uh, number two for B and so on. So we can just take this command uh, all the way to this bracket, go to button B. So button B, comma, paste that in, change that to number two, button C, comma, paste that in, and change that to three. Next one, button D, comma, paste that in, change that to four. So as you see, all of these buttons are running the same function, but passing a different argument into the function. So button pressed will receive one, two, three, or four. That's what it's going to receive. So now we've checked if answer is equal to button one, or equal to one, sorry, and it'll change button A. What we want to do then is say, well, if it doesn't, if it's not done that, we wanted to do something else. So this is where we're doing the selection. So this is remember the selection, we're saying if, elif, and so on. So we'll do elif, and then same again, answer is equal to two then. And instead of button A, we'll do button B, dot config, and fg is equal to, and it's the same thing again. Essentially you could copy this and just adjust it. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to do this again and copy that all the way to the end and go back space to here when I'm copying and then paste control V and then one more time and all I need to do is change this to three, this to four, this to button C and this to button D. Okay, so what's going to happen now is that these will all change. So we run the module, okay that, and now of course I haven't got any text in here, but if I press this one, it works. If I press these, this should work. So we'll do we'll put some test information in here. So down here, uh, button B, um, we can just put some text in there. So I'm going to actually just copy this from button A and put it after window, yeah. button C, put it after win, button D, right. So now we can run it. And let's have a look, right, so it says test, 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 test. Press that one, it works. Press that one, press that one, press that one. Great, now that changes the state of the button, but as you can see, what, you won't want to do is actually these buttons to all be on at the same time. You would actually want it where if you pressed button A and then afterwards decided actually you didn't think that was the correct answer, you would press the another button and this one would change back to its previous state. So what we would want to do is kind of like reset the buttons in a way each time that you press on a button that it resets the color of the text and then when you press it, changes it again. So that's actually quite a simple thing to be able to do. Um, what we'll do is go back up to the top where we've got our button pressed and just do another uh, procedure. So this one is going to be called reset. Reset BT ends, we'll call it buttons, like that. Put a comment, resets the text of the buttons and we just need to do four lines of code so we basically just take this line of code and then just change it back to instead of FFFF we just change it to um, zeros so I'm going to do button A four times change that to B actually I'll, I'll actually take it out and just do this one first one two so one, two, three, four, five, six, and then copy it, make it a bit easier for myself. Um, and then change from button A to B to C to D. Okay, now that's just to reset the buttons to make them the text back to black, but we actually have to run this, we have to call 
this procedure to happen. So that's nice and easy because what we'll do, we'll just put it up here um, inside our button press. So what happens is when button press is triggered, it's going to run this and change all the text back to black on the four buttons and then check if the answer is one or two or three or four and then change those ones to white. Okay, so I'll just put in here reset BTNs, open and close brackets, and that basically just runs this one, then comes back to here and runs this selection statement. So comment uh, calls uh, procedure to reset buttons. Okay, let's test it out. So, test, now I check the next one, okay, so the white has changed over to this one, and that's great. So, what will happen is that in these buttons you would have the, the answer to a question that would appear here, and you can actually change your mind before pressing the next button, which is uh, quite nice. So, if you thought, oh, it's this answer, and then... You went, oh, actually, no, wait a minute, I'll read the question again and realize, no, it's not the answer, it's this one instead, and then press the next button to check the answer, which would change the questions and change the score to either being one or staying at zero if you got the question right or wrong.